Today we'll be looking at how new research could enable direct data transfer from computers to living cells. If you're new to this channel, welcome. This is Mr. Singularity, where we explore the scientific and technological breakthroughs shaping the future as we know it. If the digital world generates more and more evidence, academics are trying to find new ways to preserve it all. DNA holds promise as an incredibly compact and stable storage medium, and now a new method could allow us to write digital data directly into the genomes of living cells. Efforts to reuse the built-in memory technologies of design are not new, but in the last decade, the method has gained renewed attention and made some substantial success. It's powered by an avalanche of data that shows no sign of slowing down. It is projected that 463 exabytes will be generated globally by 2025 per day. Storing all this data could easily become impossible using traditional silicon technologies, but DNA could hold the key. For instance, the information density is millions of times greater than traditional hard drives with a single gram of DNA capable of holding up to 215 million gigabytes. It's also very stable if properly stored. In 2017, researchers were able to retrieve from 700,000 years ago the entire genome of the extinct horse genus. Learning to process and manipulate data using the same vocabulary as nature could also open the door to a host of new biotechnological capabilities. The key complication is to find a way to interface the modern world of machines and data with the biochemical world of genetics. At present, it depends on DNA synthesizing in the laboratory. And while costs are declining steadily, this is still a difficult and costly sector. Until synthesized, these sequences must either be safely processed in vitro before they can be accessed again, or they can be spliced onto living cells using CRISPR gene editing technology. Today, however, Columbia University researchers have shown a new method that can explicitly translate optical electronic signals into genetic data contained in the genomes of living cells. This could lead to a variety of applications for both data storage and beyond, says Harris Wang, who led the research published in Nature Chemical Biology. Imagine having hard drive cell phones that can be computed and physically reconfigured in real time. He wrote to Singularity Hub in an email, we feel that the first step is to be able to encode binary data directly into cells without the need for in vitro synthesis. This may be the toughest part of all approaches to DNA storage. If you can get cells that speak directly to your computer and interface your DNA-based memory system with a silicon-based memory system, there are a lot of opportunities for the future. The study is based on the CRISPR-based cell recorder Wang had previously developed for E. coli bacteria, which senses the presence of DNA sequences within the cell and tracks the signal to the genome of the organism. The machine contains a DNA-based sensing module that generates elevated trigger sequence levels in response to particular biological signals. These sequences are inserted into the DNA ticker tape recorder to capture the signal. In this new work, Wang and colleagues have modified the sensing module to work with a biosensor built by another team that responds to electrical signals. Large populations of the bacteria were then put in a system consisting of a series of chambers that allowed the team to expose them to electrical signals. When the voltage was applied, the trigger sequence levels were increased and reported in a DNA ticker tape. Stretches with a high proportion of the trigger sequence were used to represent the binary one and the absence of zero, enabling researchers to encode digital information directly onto the genome of the bacteria. The amount of data that a single cell can contain is very tiny, just three bits. But researchers then invented a way to encrypt 24 distinct communities of bacteria with various three-bit chunks of data concurrently for a total of 72 bits. When they use this to encrypt the hello world message in the bacterium and prove that by sequencing the combined population and using a specially built classifier, message could be recovered with 98% precision. Obviously 72 bits is a long way from the storage space of current hard disks and even cell-free DNA storage methods are still being used in gigabytes. But Wang says this is only a proof of concept. There is plenty of potential for improving the performance of the CRISPR system that drives the recorder, the length of ticker tape that can accurately read, and even the electronics used to encrypt the data. All these things will improve over the next few years, and I definitely think it's possible to massively increase the capacity of the system by several orders of magnitude, even in the short term, he said. And the preservation of data in cells rather than in vitro has a range of important benefits, he said. For instance, it's much easier to amplify or replicate data so you can easily produce more cells rather than have to perform complex artificial DNA synthesis. The team demonstrated in the paper that the reported knowledge remained constant for between 60 and 80 generations of cells. Cells already have a native ability to keep their DNA protected from environmental disruptions. They've seen this by adding the E. coli cells to unsterilized potting soil and then accurately extract a 52-bit message by sequencing the combined soil microbial population. Perhaps most promising, though, is the prospect of integrating this data recording capability with emerging biocomputer science. Researchers have already begun designing DNA cells to enable them to perform logic and memory operations. 
but having a direct interface between silicon and genomes could greatly accelerate our ability to reprogram cells for our own devices. What's your take on this? Let me know in the comments below and check out one of these other videos. This has been Mr. Singularity, and I'll see you in the next one.